Hello, everybody. Um, I'm told not to be able to come to this um, meeting myself live, but uh, um, Steve Goffard has asked me to do a short video here. I'm just about to get my my assistant, um, uh, my laptop, to join me so that I can see what everyone else is seeing. So we'll get started in just a second, and I'll um, get my slides going. So I'm okay, going to um, we'll start. This is just a slide of um, what uh, the Vectvest um, front page looks like today. I'm going to come back to that um, live in a few moments when I've gone through my, my basic slides. Um, this is one of the, um, the slides I cover every month, which is the SPY divided by the TLT. And what we see in more recent months is a general trend downwards um, in this, and that essentially means that money has been, although in a fairly choppy manner, mon money has been flowing out of the SPY, out of the stock market, into the bond market. So we've seen this trend for a number of months now, it essentially reflects a, a flight to safety. This is the RCD divided by the RHS, which is Equal Weight Consumer Discretionary ETF, divided by the Equal Weight Consumer Staples. And again, for a slightly longer period, in fact, um, pretty much um, from the period at the peak, which is about the same time that Vectress US gave a, a confirmed down signal. We see this again, strongly downtrending line. And this basically means that people are moving from riskier stocks into the more boring consumer staples, utilities, that sort of, um, that sort of stock. Although what we do see in the last week or so is perhaps a little bit of levelling out, so it'll be interesting to see where we go from here, but the general trend has been towards them having less risk. Seasonality, again, I show this each um, month, and this is particularly interesting because according to the traditional seasonal um, seasonality for midterm election years, um, the red line has probably been the most um, accurate. For the, and what it is predicting over the next couple of weeks is a very, very bullish time. But also, if we look back to the bottom in July, it was also predicting, apart from a slight wobble, a pretty bullish time starting from early July to um, certainly to early August. And instead of being really quite bullish during that um, most of that period, it's actually been pretty flat. Um, we seem to have had a couple of very strong days recently, and whether that comes to anything or not, we need a few more days to know. But one of the interesting things here is that seasonality should be suggesting a very bullish time, but it's actually been a pretty sideways indecisive time. So the price action has been more bearish than it should have been. And this might suggest that when we get into this bearish period um, for the from August down to um, uh, beginning of November, it may well be that that is then even more bearish than the chart would suggest. Now, the old curve, this is interesting, you're seeing we see this really dramatic action um, on the right hand side here, which is this is essentially the difference in yield between the three month um, um, treasury and the uh, 10 year. And what we see is a massive reduction in that um, um, in that differential. And over the right hand side, you may not be able to see the numbers, but a week ago we were very close to about 1.0. So the 10 years about one one point zero percent higher than the, the three month, but that is plummeted in in the last few days, or at least this was till about uh, the end of last week, to 0.5 percent. Now, if we look at the um the the graph of the actual yield curve itself, we can see it looking very very flat um from two years where the the nick is to, to 10 years, but what we know is that um next week. Um, the Fed are going to increase the interest rates probably by 0.75%, maybe even as much as uh, uh, 1%, or if they're very shy, uh, half a percent. But what we see from um, this curve on the right is that with only a half percent or so rise in, in yields, we will have um, a flat yield curve or inverted yield curve all the way from three months to 10 years. 
and where that has happened in the past it has an 18 out of 18 record since world war ii of predicting a very nasty bear market and recession so watch out below i think is the the, the answer there and essentially what this is saying this is the bond market saying recession is absolutely certain it's just a matter of of when so we've got this continuing war of worry we've got to, we're all very aware of this some very high inflation now in the us more than nine percent or in reality both in the uk and in the us it's probably enormously more than than the official government cpi figures we've got the yield curve inverting just as we mentioned very very bad for the stock market and for the economy we've got ongoing um russia ukraine situation with no apparent um, um, end near in sight and the big um, elephant in the room interest fed interest rate hikes next week is it going to be um the 0.75 percent seems to be baked in could it possibly be higher if it is then the market really won't like that and then what are they going to do in future um future months come september are they going to do another um half percent and then we'll have an even more inverted yield curve so that's the end of those, and I'm going to stop showing that and share my live screen. So hopefully what you should now see is the, um, the front page of the uh, Backtrust um, US, and, about, and this is um, the live screen, and it's... Um, 6.30 um, UK time when I'm doing this, so it's a constantly moving target. But what we see is the, um, the colour guard is neutral, that Vectorus advocates caution when buying stocks at the time, so it does give permission to buy, but with caution. And the reason for the permission to buy is because as of um, two, uh, yesterday, we had a, um, a new primary wave up, um, but we couldn't uh, get a green light because the previous um, um, week, I think, was a uh, a red light that's right yeah so it can't go to green which otherwise it would have done the rt ticked up um a couple of days ago from 0.82 to 0.91 that was a big one day rise uh a slight notch up to 0.93 today as we at this time we speak the bsr again was down on its knees 0.14 then 0.14 two days ago then had a huge jump from 0.14 to 0.34 then a bit of a notch up again as we speak to 0.39. Now, as some most of us probably know, that uh, you can't get a confirmed up until the BSR is um, above is above 1.0. So still quite a long way to, to go. It's above the 0 0.20 level where the market is looking for a bottom. But um, you know, whether this is a, a, you know, what a, a sucker's rally and we're about to go head downwards again, we'll have to see. We need a bit more information. And by the end of the week come we might know that and here we have the, the mti it's above the 0 0.60 level where the market is um, said to be looking for bottom so it's arisen from there 0.85 so it's still quite weak and therefore the second um uh two letters in the trend column are down and then we've got the over overarching um signal from a confirmed down so we've got a bit of a sort of a mini rally going on and whilst on this page i just quickly um cover the top bst stocks Cross country health as a word, health stock, um, a health stock, Clearfield, which is a fiber optic company, uh, another AMN healthcare. So there's a clue in the healthcare. Dynavax is a, a vaccine company, I think. Axis, um, I forget what um, sort of stock that is. Um, semiconductor, so that's that's interesting. So a bit of an emphasis on, on health related things in the top, um, top five. If we go to the, um, the sectors, drug is top, um, then market, which is our brokers and that sort of thing, containers, utilities, which again, this of safe, boring stuff, and then banks, which of course we all bet on them um, earlier in the year. Um, top industries, ETFs, biotech, so another clue there, leisure, toy and games, computer graphics, transportation, and building mobile RVs, that sort of thing. So interesting collection. Um, so in terms of um, the, the front page here, we can see that the primary wave is up, the confirmed call is down, and let's now go and look quickly at the, um, um, the DEW um, um, setup, and what we see is this very clear downtrend, chopping you know, backwards and forwards between um, um, the tops and the bottom of this um, downtrend lines, um, got the high here 
on uh, 9th of November, confirmed down on the 26th of November, which, as it happens, picked the absolute all-time high of the NASDAQ, which is quite a good call. But what we see is certainly the longer-term trend here is considerably downwards. Um, in terms of the short term, we're sort of going backwards and forwards in a bit of a range, and the price action, we're trying to break out of this range, and we may not quite be doing that. It's certainly showing a bit of resistance, but again, another few days will tell. But if we look at this longer term, um, long term resistance line, you know, firstly, I'm not going to be that interested, even with this DEW, um, until we've broken through that, uh, that down trend line. And then we've got a, a 78.6 line just above that. And then again, I'll get a bit more and more excited when we've broken above this um, this previous summer swing high there. So I think that gives a hopefully gives a reasonable overview of what's going on. I'm sorry not to, to be able to meet the meeting meeting today. Have a great meeting. I hope to be with you live next next time. Thanks very much.